Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. In today's video, I wanna share with you guys what makes the RC four wheel drive Trailfinder 2 different and why I think it's so cool compared to other RCs available right now. So I picked this one up from A Main Hobbies. I do have an affiliate link down below. If you purchase anything through that link, it helps support the channel. So on this truck, it has a hard plastic body. So most RCs these days come with Lexan bodies and uh, there's a ton of aftermarket Lexan bodies available that you can put onto whatever truck you want. These are really awesome because they are the hard plastic. So a lot of people can modify these in really interesting and cool ways. Like for example, you can cut down the edges of the fenders and then cut a V into your front hood and actually pinch the nose in and give you more clearance for your wheels and tires. Now, I like the look of the complete truck body here. This one is the RC four wheel drive Marlin Crawler Edition. And so this one does have the pre-bobbed bed, um, meaning that like the original factory length bed on the Toyotas, if you scale it up, this one has been chopped and shortened, which gives you better clearance on the rear of these trucks. So in real life, that's absolutely something you would do. And it has been done to this RC already, which is an awesome feature helps you give more clearance on these little trucks. Now, the biggest thing I like about this truck the most is it is a leaf spring suspension. So underneath the truck, there are no links and there are no coilover shocks. What you have is spring steel and then those are attached to shackles and spring hangers, just like real suspension would be bolted directly to your axle. And then you have these little shocks on the truck. Now, when I first got this out of the box, I did modify it. And the way that I modified this, uh, the spring packs have three different springs in them. And here is one right there. As you can see, spring steel flexes and returns to shape. Really cool. Uh, you can put it on something flat, squish it down flat, and it pops right back up. I took out the smallest leaf spring on all four corners and then on the uh, shocks of this truck, they actually had an additional coil spring inside the shocks. I removed those, removed the smallest helper spring and left the two spring packs on the front and rear of this truck. Basically that softens the suspension, but the helper, the helper spring that's remaining in there helps stop axle wrap from actually adding more torque and twisting up your suspension, which can bend your leaf springs and then they don't perform as good. Now, speaking of performance on these trucks, um, articulation is not their strong suit. So even with my modifications, that's about as much articulation I can get before it starts picking up tires. Um, the front, it's about as much as you get. So, I mean, not even really a half of wheel and tire um, compared to most of my coilover trucks that have way more than a wheel and tire articulation. It adds its own challenge, but I really like it. That's kind of why I purchased this is because it's a fun truck to go out and drive. And in my experience, these things are still extremely capable, even with the leaf spring suspension and limited uh, suspension travel. Now, another thing on the RC four wheel drive here that makes it really unique, especially compared to other trucks, we're actually going to pop the body off and I'm going to show you guys. Now, traditionally, these trucks are held on with four two millimeter screws at the base of each door. Um, I removed them before the video on this side, and then I actually use two grub screws so there's no head on the screw into the body post here. So that body just kind of slips on, and then once you screw the other side on, it can't come off. So I like that setup. Um, as you can see here, got a great big 4500 3S battery pack in there. These trucks are compatible with 3S with their factory ESC right out of the box. Just make sure you have it on the LiPo mode. So I'm going to pull this out to kind of make everything a little bit easier to see and understand in here. Okay, so what's really cool about these trucks, it's got a forward mounted motor, just like a real real life truck would have. And then it's got a transmission that sits behind that with a nice little slope down bell housing design, just like similar to a real truck would be. And then you actually have a transfer case. Mine is a little bit blocked off by a metal plate here, um, but there is a divorced transfer case, which means that there's actually a intermediate shaft between your transmission and your transfer case. So the transfer case is its own thing. Um, so I like that. It's very realistic in the way that the drivetrain is set up. 
And then off the bottom side, you can see where your drive lines come out, go into each axle, again, with the leaf spring suspension. Uh, the chassis itself is not a C-channel chassis. Um, the Axial SCX-102 or the Element, um, those are going to be C-channel chassis. These are actually like a solid aluminum bar that uh, obviously has some shape and flow to it. It gets wider and narrower in a few spots. But uh, that way that you, they can drill and tap into the chassis itself so they can use fewer uh, nuts and bolt designs which is a better way to go. I would rather thread a bolt directly into the chassis. Just be careful not to strip it out because you're gonna cause yourself a heck of a headache if you do that. Um, I did add the fenders inside of the chassis here. Um, those bolt onto the shock towers. Now, one modification I've heard about online is uh, when you get your Trail Finder 2 to get the Galand um, taller shock towers for the front, my Marlin came out of the box with the taller shock towers. So if you're picking up a Marlin, it's already got that, you don't have to worry about it. I was planning on getting that, but like I said, I looked at it and it's already got the taller shock towers for uh, the longer shocks up front, hopefully give you a little more articulation there. Now let's talk about uh, a few other modifications I've done. On the tires, right out of the box, um, basically I vented them. So I cut the, the rubber a little bit, which allows air to escape and it allows the tire to grab onto rocks a little bit better. I do go out and drive this thing pretty aggressively, so I'm looking for as much traction as I can get. Um, speaking of, the RTR tires, which are these 4.19 inch tall um, RC four wheel drive IROC tires, they look super realistic, the compound is great, and they absolutely climb really, really well. I've been really impressed with how these perform right out of the box. It's got the 1.7 inch RC four wheel drive wheels, and then it has scale hardware around the bead ring. And I believe the six bolts that look like the lugs on the wheels actually sandwich the two outer halves of the wheel together. And then there's an inner ring that will sit in your tire, and that's what creates the bead lock. So these are bead lock wheels, they're not glued on, and I'm pretty sure the wheels are a two piece split design with that ring in the inside. So far, I've just run the standard steering servo. No big deal there. Um, I'm pretty much just waiting for it to die. It's kind of how I expect any RTR servo to go. They don't last too long in my environment. Now on the transfer case, like I mentioned, it's kind of hard to see because I've actually added an A&M garage skid on this. The factory transfer case cross member was a really narrow piece and then it, it would hang really far down low. So as you try and crawl over a rock, it's basically like just this big shovel and it would grab onto the rock and not let go. Your truck could not slide and move over things. I believe it's machined out of Delrin. Um, this Marlin came with like the updated high clearance version, which is still not high clearance. It's not very good. Um, a and M Garage makes this metal skid plate, big flat bottom side here, nice and smooth a ton of clearance under this truck with this thing now. Um, they do have the plate up top, which actually lifts your transfer case. And uh, that's why you can't see mine is because that plate there helped pull that up and away. Um, I've seen online that people recommend getting new drive shafts uh, once you do that mod. I don't see a need for it yet. I haven't really gone out and wheeled it hard. I don't know if it's gonna start spitting out the drive shafts. My rear seems to have plenty of contact, um, but I'm not running this thing on like 4S brushless or anything. Um, I don't think that's a great idea with the leaf spring suspension anyway. Up front, I got one other modification from A&M Garage, and that is their front shackle reverse kit. So the Marlin out of the box, the shackles uh, that allow the leaf spring to flex and move sit up front. But as they point out in their videos, as a leaf spring compresses, uh, it's going to move in the direction of the shackle. So as you push into a rock wall, for your tire to come up, it has to travel forward. And so it's gonna put more pressure into that wall, which is fighting against itself. So with a poor performing articulating suspension, making it fight against rocks is not a good way to go. So I went with their reversal kit. It adds these big steel um, spring hangers up front, and I did the plus four millimeter on there as well, which scoots the axle a little bit further forward, reducing your approach angle so I can get up to a steeper rock face and not just smash my bumper into the wall. That is my final upgrade I wanna talk about. As I took the RC four wheel drive bumper, 
cut it up, use the bull bar, and I used the bottom mount since it was already welded and had drilled and tapped for places to mount it back into that front cross member. And then I bent up my own solid rod um, to kind of form to the front of the truck here and then come up with a couple little supports there. And I had help from a friend down here who runs Low Range RC. Um, if you guys have not heard of Low Range RC, they're making little tow ropes right now. They also make like big stinger bumpers, which has, some of them have the option of having a bottle opener right on the stinger of your truck, which I think is just a really cool design. So shout out to Low Range RC. Excited to see the future products that they come up with. That's probably going to be about it here, guys. You may notice I do have an axial 35 turn motor in here, and I also dropped the pinion gear way down because this motor is faster than the factory motor. I geared it down to try and give it more low wheel speed control again, but then I have the higher burst speed, especially with 3S. This thing's got decent wheel speed to get through sand and whatnot in my area. You got to be able to get through sand to get to some of the rocks. Well, guys. I hope you enjoyed the breakdown of my RC four wheel drive trail finder two. I really like these trucks. Like I mentioned the chassis, the suspension, the layout of it. It's just a really cool scale truck. Admittedly, I am not a great scale builder. Um, there are plenty of people out there who are, I'm not one of them, but this makes the scale side of things more accessible to someone like myself. I mostly like to drive, but it doesn't mean I don't appreciate the look and performance of a cool scale truck. So this is probably my, least capable crawler, but I still get out there and push it pretty hard on the rocks. My name is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. There are links down below to this truck and the upgrades. Definitely check them out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know what you think of this style of video. I'd appreciate some feedback since this is my first one. And uh, be sure to get subscribed while you guys are here because I'm gonna be posting consistent content, any and every subscriber along the way, I greatly appreciate. We will see you guys in the next one. Keep the rubber side down.